Disgraced Jesuit Father Marco Rupnik was seen concelebrating Mass at a Rome Basilica this week, despite restrictions that prohibit him from any public ministerial or sacramental activity. Rupnik is the Jesuit priest and artist accused of sexual and psychological abuse of consecrated women and men. He is currently under investigation by his order for a number of new allegations. The Jesuit superior said that, according to the terms of his restrictions, Rupnik is only allowed to concelebrate masses in conjunction with his community, the Aleti Center. The Mass on Sunday, March 5th, was attended by members of the Aleti Center, but was also open to the public. Italian media have also reported that Rupnik was seen speaking to a visiting group at St. John Lateran Basilica in January about his artistic work. There have also been reports that Bishop Gustavo Zanchetta, confidant of Pope Francis, who has been convicted of abusing seminarians, he, too, was seen in public despite restrictions placed on him. We'll continue to monitor these stories. Troubling. Last week, Congress held hearings on the threat posed to the U.S. by the Chinese Communist Party. This week, China's foreign minister issued a warning to the U.S. that conflict between the two nations seems inevitable in the wake of the balloon controversy and the U.S. plan to sell missiles to Taiwan. Are China and the U.S. preparing for an eventual conflict, and should they? And what of China's ongoing offenses against religious liberty and human rights? Joining me to discuss is Asian affairs expert and author, Gordon Chang. Gordon, thanks for being here. Let's start with China's warning to the U.S. this week that confrontation and conflict are inevitable unless the United States backs off of what Xi calls containment, encirclement, and suppression of China. Gordon, th this sounds like uh, Xi, the president there, is laying the groundwork for a coming conflict. In the wake of the spy balloon controversy, the recent announcement that the U.S. is considering the sale of missiles to Taiwan, is a hot war or a conflict with China inevitable? I don't think it's inevitable, Raymond, um, but it's becoming increasingly likely. And I think that we can say that it mm. will occur unless something changes. And right now, I don't see uh, too much changing because the Biden administration is not applying those policies that can deter China. We know that deterrence is breaking down. We don't have to guess that. We can hear it from the words of the Chinese. And right now, they are establishing a justification to strike the United States. James Lilly, yep. our great ambassador That's to Beijing at the end of the 1980s and the 1990s, say the, the Chinese always telegraph their punches, and that's exactly what they're doing now. Yeah. No, it sounds like a predicate for war. I mean, particularly what Xi said. Uh, he also told his uh, military heads last week, I think, prepare. 2027 is coming. You need to be ready. Uh, it, how is the Biden administration preparing for this conflict, should it come? I mean, is the U.S. taking China seriously? I, you know, we're taking China seriously, quote unquote, but we're not taking it uh, as an urgent matter. And that's what's really important mm -hmm. because, you know, we heard William Burns, the director of the CIA, say that China is basically is going to go to war in 2027 or at least be prepared to do so. But I think it could be very well sooner than that. The reason is that right now there's distress in China and that gives Xi Jinping a lot of reasons to lash out. And also, there's always the possibility of accident, because China is engaged in this very dangerous intercepts of our planes in the global commons. Mm. So we need to be ready to fight tonight, as they say, not 15 years or five years from tonight. Yeah. Well, when Xi is saying, elevate quickly to his military leaders, uh, uh, people better listen. The government of Taiwan, uh, Gordon, is reporting that it suspects China warships of cutting off Internet from the island, which would appear to be another in a long line of intimidation uh, tactics, including sending warships, fighter jets toward Taiwan. How soon are we likely to see China take action against Taiwan? And is the Ukraine-Russia conflict being... Uh, are there lessons that the Chinese are drawing from that? Yeah, I think there are lessons that China is getting from Ukraine. And, and we like to say... Well, you know, the heroic resistance of the Ukrainian people is giving Beijing second thoughts. As a matter of fact, that's what William Burns has said. 
But I think that they're seeing, first of all, the breakdown in deterrence that uh, thought that made Vladimir Putin thought he could invade without cost. And I think they're also seeing the sanctions that we're imposing on Russia are not really that effective. So uh, I'm afraid that the messages that Beijing is getting out of the Ukraine war are encouraging it to move on Taiwan, not discouraging it. Yeah, well, despite the Biden sanctions on Russia, their economy is growing faster than the U.S. economy. So the lesson would be defy the U.S., do what you're going to do, and let them spend their wealth uh, sending secondary uh, armaments to your opponent and drain their own wealth. It sounds like a good plan, and, and I'm sure she is watching. The White House keeps saying they do not support independence for Taiwan, Gordon. Is that the right messaging, or does that look like capitulation and collapse before Xi? Yeah, I think that that does look like capitulation. What we should be saying is that the United States will defend Taiwan. We will offer a mutual defense treaty. We will offer to recognize Taiwan as Taiwan. And I actually think that we should mm. preposition some munitions there, something we didn't do in Ukraine, and even base a small tripwire force there, like we do in South Korea. The point is that, yeah, this is risky and dangerous, but because of really bad policy for three decades, everything is risky and dangerous. And the most risky and dangerous mm -hmm. thing of all is to continue with policies that haven't worked. Yeah. According to reports, China's defense budget has doubled over the past 10 years. China has the world's largest standing military, the world's largest navy. China seems to be talking about war on a daily basis. What does the U.S. need to do? to push back at this point. I mean, the enforced sanctions, that doesn't seem to be doing the trick. Uh, no, no, certainly not the um, posture of the Biden administration. Um, we need to convince China that we will act with political will. And that means um, taking actions that in some ways, you know, hurt the United States. Because, you know, everything that we do is going to have some detrimental impact. And China is counting on us not to do anything because some group in the United States will complain. We need to show political will. We do that, we have a chance of stopping China before it invades Taiwan, Japan, the Philippines, or wherever. But if we don't do that, mm -hmm. the Chinese will say, well, the Americans, they, they're not really serious. We can do what we want, which is exactly what Putin thought in uh, February of last year. Uh, is the Chinese economic model working at this point, Gordon? I mean, uh, there's a Wall Street Journal article this week that talks about the CCP's making inroads to private companies and corporations in China and worries that they could upset the chain supply in the United States. How integrated are Chinese businesses here in the U.S.? And, and does that pose a threat? It absolutely does, because, um, you know, we heard, for instance, TikTok saying that they would never comply with the demand to spy for Beijing. Well, there's something called the 2017 National Intelligence Law in China that requires every Chinese entity to spy if demanded. And, of course, no Chinese entity, no Chinese national can refuse a demand from the Communist Party. So, yeah, we have to believe that because of this doctrine of civil military fusion, where the military gets everything, that essentially private, state, it doesn't really matter. It's one big company that is a threat mm -hmm. to the United States. Hmm. I want to move on to the ongoing human rights and religious liberty issues in China. As I mentioned earlier, the U.S. Congress convened hearings on the China threat. Congressman Chris Smith was here last week, and he's sponsoring an anti-human trafficking organ harvesting bill. Um, CNA reports this week that one Chinese province is using a government smart religion app to force religious believers to register in order to attend services. China Aid, a U.S.-based Christian charity, says the provincial government of Henan is using the app to require all believers to make what it calls online reservations before attending a church, a mosque, or a Buddhist temple. Now, Gordon, the, the, the app records the usual personal information. It issues a reservation code. And believers must take temperature and uh, put other vitals into this app before they can attend worship. Your thoughts on this new level of control being taken by the CCP? Yeah, this is part of the Communist Party's um, digital totalitarianism, as it's been called. 
And this has gone further than what we've seen before, but this is the general drift of where Beijing is going. You know, they're trying to put in place this national social credit system, and I'm sure that they are going to have church attendance as a negative factor. This measures um, mm. behavior of people. So clearly we are moving in a direction where there will be um, no religious uh, uh, ceremonies or, or services ever permitted in China because Beijing does not want religion at any place in China, um, even if it's controlled religion. Hmm. So, uh, it, which, again, boggles the mind why the Vatican would continue to update their agreement with China, handing over their worshipers, handing over their dioceses to the Chinese authorities. Were they not better underground? And the most important thing, the thing that leapt out to me, Gordon, during this conversation, is that the Chinese always telegraph their punches. If that's true, people should throw TikTok off of their phones and probably throw their phones away today, and we should stop doing business with the Chinese in any way. I'll give you the final word. Absolutely. You know, we are seeing, um, just taking religion um, and the Protestants, the underground Protestant sects are, are rapidly um, increasing membership and, uh, and, and services, uh, whereas the official Protestant church is stagnating. I think that's also true for um, Catholicism in China, although it's a yes. little bit different because you do need priests. But clearly, um, when you have the, the regime involved, it's never good. No, no. They were better underground. They were healthier underground. And, and you had Absolutely. a real lively faith. I think uh, the Vatican has done a great disservice to their people by exposing them and, uh, and worse, handing over lists of the people who were attending and the cameras being installed in the churches. It's the worst thing that could have happened. Gordon, we will leave it there. For all the latest, you can follow Gordon at his Twitter account, at Gordon G. Chang. Thank you, Gordon. Thanks so much, Raymond.